Uh, and then I'm going to go to the book of James. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and James chapter 5. I'll be reading in both places and I'll try to uh, I'll try to get through my reading quickly and then uh, and then move into uh, the uh, expository part of delivering this that the Lord's laid on my heart my heart is heavy tonight with this message from the Lord and uh, I felt the Holy Ghost quicken it to my heart early this morning and, and through the day today it just man is weighing on me and I want to help you Tonight, um, I, I'd like for people to know that I love them, and uh, I don't. I don't intentionally try to preach harsh. I don't intentionally try to preach stout. I just try to preach what the Bible said without fear and favor. I don't try to add anything to it for sure or take away because. Jesus said, if I did, that uh, I'd be a curse. So I don't want to do that. I'm not trying to make a name for myself as a hard preacher. Uh, I, I would rather be known as a preacher that loved people than a hard preacher. But a preacher that loves people will preach them the truth. Amen. That's right. That's right. A mother that loves a child will spank it to keep it from putting its finger in a light socket rather than the alternative of letting it be electrocuted to death. That's right. I didn't appreciate spankings when I got them. As, I'm not fixing spanking, but I didn't appreciate spanking when I got them as a child, but I am thankful that mom didn't let me burn the house down. And I am thankful she didn't let me get run over playing in traffic, and I am thankful that she didn't let me, you know, put my fork in a light socket, electrocute my foolish self, and die. I didn't appreciate the spanking, but I appreciated her warning me with truth. And so, as a minister of the gospel, it is our obligation to preach the truth. I feel it incumbent upon my soul to do that, and it's not the gospel of what makes men feel good. I didn't get in the ministry to win friends and influence people. I'm not running for political office. I'm trying to go to heaven. I'm not in the ministry to tickle ears. And oftentimes we would prefer the preacher that stands before us to tickle our ear as opposed to prick our heart. But I must deliver the word of God in its entirety. And uh, I feel a weighty burden tonight to preach to us. And uh, I want to give you what I felt the Lord lay on my heart. And I feel like it applies to every one of us, including me. So as I preach tonight, I don't want you to feel like that I'm throwing anything off on you that I haven't taken my portion of it myself. I believe this applies to every one of us. I believe it applies to our church as a body. And I also believe it applies to our church as the corporate body of Christ across the world. But this is a relevant message that we need in our hour. And uh, so I want to try to deliver it to you tonight the best that I can. First Corinthians chapter number 14. And uh, I want to begin reading in verse number 7. And the Bible said that even things without life giving sound, whether pipe or harp, except they give a distinction in the sounds, how shall it be known what is piped or harp? For if the trumpet shall give an uncertain sound, if the trumpet give an uncertain sound, who shall prepare himself to the battle? So likewise ye, except you utter by the tongue words easy to be understood, how shall it be known what is spoken? For you shall speak into the air. There are, it may be, so many kinds of voices in the world, and none of them is without signification. James chapter number 5, and then I'll uh, go back and begin my comments. James chapter 5 and verse number 10, Take my brethren, the prophets, who have spoken in the name of the Lord, for an example of suffering affliction, and of patience. Behold, we count them happy which ye endure. You have heard of the patience of Job, and you have seen the end of the Lord, that the Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy. But above all things, my brethren, swear not, neither by heaven, nor by earth, nor by any other oath, but let your yea be yea, and your nay, nay, lest you fall into condemnation. 
quite a warning is given by James the writer, and then quite a admonition here is given as well by the Apostle Paul to the church of Corinth. Both of these are uh, important passages of Scripture, weighty passages of Scripture, and uh, I want to look into this tonight if I can. This uh, the 14th chapter of 1 Corinthians deals a lot with prophecy and tongues, the gifts of the Spirit, things of that nature, the use of spiritual gifts. And as he begins to talk about that, he tells them that with things without life giving sound, this, this piano or a guitar, pipe or harp, except they give a distinction in the sound, how shall it be known what is pipe or harp? I, I mean, I'm not a great musician by any means, but I can tell the difference in striking a note on that piano and striking a note on the guitar. I can tell the difference in pounding a drum and jingling a tambourine. There is a distinction to the sound. If I can shut my eyes tonight, you can pick up a tambourine and I'll never confuse it with a guitar. You can strum a guitar and I'll never confuse it with that banjo hanging over there. You can thump this bass and I'll never confuse it with a piano. They are distinct sounds that I understand what they belong to. And so the apostle is writing to him concerning the fact that there needs to be a distinction in the sound. He said, if the trumpet shall give an uncertain sound, who would prepare himself to the battle? This particular passage here is being written at a time that when it was time to gather people together, a trumpet was used to do that. The trumpet, or especially in the Old Testament, the trumps of uh, the horns made of ram's horns, something like those big curled horns, a chauffeur or a shofar, however you want to pronounce that word, that was what was used to assemble the people. There was a, there was a necessity of the sound, and there was a necessity of knowing what sound was being made on the instrument. And, and, and this this uh, allusion is given here, this analogy is made here, if the trumpet give an uncertain sound, who shall prepare himself to the battle? I mean, if you're just out there on a battlefield and it's time to charge into the face of the enemy, and the guy with the, with the trumpet, the bugler, the guy that's given the, I mean, that's how they gave orders. Everybody couldn't hear if, if the man standing there said, we're going to do this, do this, and do this, and then you got to pass it all the way down the line and take a long time. And so there was a specific sound that was associated with every command that was given. Reveille, officer's call, mess call, charge, retreat. It's your responsibility as a soldier to know the sound. But it's the responsibility of the trumpeter to bow the correct sound at the correct time. If it's time to advance and the trumpeter's playing taps over here on his, on his horn, it's going to be a problem if the trumpet's giving out an uncertain sound. Who's going to prepare himself to the battle? So there's a responsibility tonight, not only on the trumpeter, but on those that hear the trumpet. Yeah. He has a responsibility to blow it right. We have a responsibility to hear it right. There's a great responsibility on the last day church. I have a responsibility as the trumpeter to sound the alarm, to let you know it's time to pray, yes. it's time to fast, it's time to worship. Yes. But you as the hearer, you have a great responsibility to know the sound and to carry out that command that's being given from the trumpeter. Yes. So Paul is warning them here and he said that we're living in a time, he said there are many, there are many, many. He even said it like this, there are so many kinds of voices. I, I, I'm telling you tonight, there's a lot of voices yes. right now. We no longer use a trumpet. Like we did then, like these people were accustomed to it, but the scripture is still relevant today. We no longer gather the, the school bell rings, they don't blow a trumpet. Time to go to work, a whistle may blow, or maybe a brother Brad works in the school system, and so he knows it's lunchtime when a certain bell rings at a certain time. And, 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 and then a little while later, that same bell rings at a different time, and it means something different yes. when it rings at that time. We no longer use the trumpet, but we still use sounds. And I want you to know tonight we're living in a world that there are so many kinds of voices. Yes. 
There are a lot of voices. Someone told me just the other day concerning the situation said, I just don't know who to believe. There's so many different things being said that it becomes mass confusion to try to differentiate all of that and figure out exactly what's really right here. There's a responsibility that I have to preach clear doctrine to you. I have a great responsibility upon me tonight that I preach clearly from the Word of God that you can understand the Scripture. But then your responsibility is to carry out what has been preached from this Scripture. Help the trumpet me. is being sounded. He said there are so many kinds of voices and none of them are without signification. God. There's voices crying for gender euphoria. Yes. Mm -hmm. There's voices crying out for transformation of the sexes. Mm -hmm. There's voices crying out for our government to be rearranged. There's voices crying out for the Constitution. And there's voices crying out against the Constitution. Yes. There's voices crying out for people to come in through the border. And there's other voices crying out to seal up the border. There's voices crying out for the right. And there's voices crying out for the left. There's voices crying out in favor of abortion. And there's voices crying out against abortion. And when we bring it right on down to the church, there's every conceivable sound that's known to man being sounded across the airwaves of churches in the name of the Lord. I need to preach to you tonight. James, his warning, he tells them to be careful that your yea is yea, your nay is nay. He starts into that one particular passage there by saying, Take my brethren the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. Now, I'm going to say something tonight, and if you need further clarification, you can come to me up church and I'll tell you exactly what I'm talking about. I'm not going to preach ambiguously. If a prophet prophesies and has to amend that prophecy later, it did not come from the Holy Ghost. Right. Amen. Make no mistake. Amen. They may have our name. They may come among us. But if a prophecy is given as thus saith the Lord, and it does not come to pass, it did not come from the Lord. Amen. The Constitution of the United States has been amended. It's been amended to allow women the right to vote. Yes. It's been amended to allow the colored people the right to vote. It's been amended to cause the colored people to not be enslaved any longer. Yes. Amendments are necessary in government, but amendments are never necessary where prophecy is concerned. When I say you made a prophecy, it didn't never need to be amended. It came to pass like he said it was going to come to pass. When they said he's going to be born in Bethlehem, they didn't need to amend that later because he ended up being born. He came a little early, and they had him out here in, you know, somewhere else. That didn't have to be that way. They said not a bone of him is going to be broken, and not one bone was broken. They said he'd be lifted up on a tree, and he was. Well, help me while I preach tonight. I want to preach to you on the church that cried wolf. Aesop's fables. There's a story there that's familiar, I'm sure, to everyone here about the little shepherd boy who repeatedly cried wolf. He went into the village there and he said, there's a wolf attacking the sheep, but there wasn't one. And he did it again and again and again. And in the process of time, as the scripture would say, that young man came in to tell that there was a wolf. And nobody believed him. Because he'd been a hollering that for so long. And it had been untrue. It had given uncertain sound. Yes. Somewhere in around 1830, John Hookham Freer rewrote that little story. And he added to the lore of the tale. And he said that when the shepherd boy cried wolf the last time, that not only did the wolf eat the sheep, but the wolf ate the little boy. And he had nobody to come and rescue Nothing, him. Jesus. Praise God. That story dates back to the mid-1400s. 
Way back, that's been a long time ago. It was printed in 1484, 14, 1574, it was reprinted, 1687, 1692, 1830, 1867, 1912, 1964, 1965. It's been printed in many, many languages across the globe about the little boy that cried wolf. Aristotle gave the parable of a sage who was asked, what do men gain who lie? And Aristotle's reply was, they gain that no man will believe them. Yes. They cried wolf. They cried wolf. They cried wolf. That English diplomat, John Hook of Freer, rewrote that story. It was published in school literature. Can you imagine in the day and hour that we're living in, publishing a school story for little boys and girls about the necessity of not lying? Can you imagine that they would print that nowadays? That that, that, that story would be used in a public school setting or reared by the government that they would teach little children not to lie? And then not only that, but that there was such a penalty that the wolf ate the boy who lied. Yes. I'm telling you, we're coming very swiftly into the hour that Christ warned the church about. Be not deceived. For many shall come in my name. Oh, I wish I could preach to you tonight. Many shall come in my name. I tell you, they're flying the Christian flag everywhere you look. And they're living in the old way they want to live. I tell you, people don't want to become the church that cried wolf. We're there. The hour that Jesus said would come, that men would lie in the name of the Lord.
He speaks expressly. Yes. He makes no mistakes. Take and consider my brethren the prophets that spake in the name of the Lord. Yes. God help me that if I say it's the Lord speaking, Brother Chuck, you don't have to second guess it. You can say, I know that man. He's been on his face before the Lord. And if God said it, it's going to be that way. If you get up and prophesy, someone's going to have a child according to the time of life. The time of life is nine months. Do you hear me? It's not 20 years. It's not five months. If you get up and tell somebody that they're going to have a boy and they have a girl, brother, you're a false prophet. And that's an uncertain sound. I tell you why. A lot of our young people have lost respect for the pulpit. And why a lot of church people have lost respect for the house of God. Yes, we become a church that God will. So much foolishness in the name of gospel. Yes, there is. If your profession does not match your possession. Yes. You are like the Pharisees. Yes. For the Bible said, Jesus said like this, for they say and do not. Yeah. I want to be careful that what I possess is also matching what I profess. Yes. Are you all hearing me tonight? I'll tell you what, if we're going to have holiness on that sign, we better have holiness in our hearts. And holiness on this Bible desk. And holiness in our situation. You understand what I'm telling you? I don't want to profess to the whole world on Pentecostal and never speak in tongues. I don't want to profess to the society around me that I'm living a life of holiness. But I'm doing everything that the world does. Don't cry wolf. If our life is not in keeping with the word of God. We have a problem. Yes. Help me while I preach. Help him, Jesus. Help Paul him. warned in the chapter before where I read to you. He said, if I have not charity, and if I speak in tongues, and I don't love everybody, and I can't love my brother, and I can't get along with them, and I profess to be a man having the Holy Ghost, he said, I'm just a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal. Yes. If you can't love people, and you don't have the love of God, you're not a I didn't say you didn't. You hear me? I'm not preaching against tongues, and I'm going to get around to that in a minute. But I'm telling you, just because somebody jabbers every once in a while, that don't mean they've got it. If they can't live a life sanctified, if they can't love the sinner, and get along with the church people, they don't have God's Holy Ghost. Help him, Jesus. Don't cry wolf. Jesus, help us. God. Is your religion crying wolf? Is your experience in God crying wolf to the people you work with? One preacher said this. I could call his name. He said it publicly, but I guess for the sake of animosity, maybe I shouldn't. But he went to have a new church sign made. And his church sign was so-and-so church, holiness, Pentecostal, had a bunch of stuff on it. And they told me, he said, Mr. You know, Mr. Hughes, Brother Junior, Mr. Allen, your church sign has too much words and we can't print all that. And he said, I looked at him and said, you can leave off most of it because most of our folks ain't living up to what's on it anyway. And he said, my church people didn't like that very much. I'll tell you what, if I'm going to stand up and say I'm saved, saved, I'm going to with the Holy Ghost. Hey, man, brother, if you ain't full of it, you're lying. Hey, man, if we're not saved, if I were lying, if we're not really in love with Jesus, I tell you what the Lord said in the way over the old Bible in Proverbs. Yes. He said that a He said that an unequal weight, an unjust balance, He said it's abomination to the Lord. Yes, it is. You hear me? Yes. We must have a balanced life of Christianity. Yes. If you profess to have the Holy Ghost, it needs to speak once in a while. Yes. Help me, God. Help me preach. We preach to the world that we possess the love of Christ. And then when sinners come in from without, we want to nitpick them to death. 
And tell them everything they got to do. If you're going to be a part of us, you've got to do this and this and this and this. And then you can't do this and this and this. And because you did this while you was in sin, you can't do this inside the church. Help him, God. Are you crying, wolf? Help us, Jesus. Are we preaching to the whole wide world that we love the sinner? And then we make the sinner feel so pitiful and uncomfortable when they come in among us. And we cry wolf to the point that the sinner don't believe us anymore. Amen. Jesus, help us, come Lord, on. please. I want you to know tonight in no uncertain terms, I want to sound a clear clarion call to you that old time conversion in Jesus Christ, justification by faith, salvation by the blood, the washing of the blood over the soul of the man to free him from the penalty of sin. But not only that, it'll make him stop the sinning business. I want you to understand, I don't hear a preaching cry wolf to you. I want you to know salvation's real. Have we got such a watered down version in the church world today that sinners come in seeking for freedom from sin and there ain't enough of the power of God moving in us and even hardly shake the dust off the chains that's got them down? Are we professing to be holiness? I'll tell you what that means. If you're holiness, that means you believe in sanctification. That means you live different than the world. You talk different than the world. You act different than the world. We hold ourselves to a higher bar because we're holiness people. And we preach sanctification. And then somebody comes in from without and they see us doing everything in the world that we preach against and talking ways we shouldn't talk and going where we shouldn't go. And they begin to believe salvation and sanctification is just nothing. Yes. He's crying wolf. Help us, God. Help us, Jesus. Oh, I need to preach to us tonight. Have we cried wolf about Holy Ghost baptism? Brother Ely said, they call me Holy Roller, that's all right. They call me a Holy Roller, that's all right. They call me Holy Roller, but that's all right. Just so you're living holy, that's all right. I tell you what, it's been a long time since you rolled the floor. Are you a Holy Roller? If it's been a long time since you danced in the Holy Ghost, and you go up and tell people we believe in it, but we don't practice it. And you go up and tell people I believe in speaking in tongues, and you ain't been in the Holy Ghost so long, it scared you and us walk to death if you did it. Somebody said that I'm, I know these are old cliches. It's been around a long time. Said so they used to go to church, see the show, and now there ain't no show. I understand all that. And I heard somebody say the other day, "Well, we need to preach better than just preaching a bunch of cliches." Well, I'm gonna tell you something tonight. Help him, God. Ninety-nine percent of the time, there ain't enough of a show to hardly catch the attention of anybody when you go to most homeless meetings. Somebody, somebody told me I come to church before church just just the last day or two. Somebody said that's a hard pill to swallow. I said the doctors gave me some hard pills to swallow, but I swallowed them anyway because I if I didn't, I may die. Yes. Just because it's hard for you to swallow, don't mean it ain't right. Amen. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Help him, Jesus. I tell you, I'm stirred in my spirit. Come if on. we've come to a place that our children. And young families in the church can't really have confidence in prophecy anymore because there's been so many of them that have failed and failed and failed and been amended and been amended and been If I come to you on your deathbed and I tell you God's going to heal you and raise you up and you die, I am a false prophet. Amen. You hear me? If I tell you God's going to raise you up, He's going to do it. And if He don't do it, He didn't speak through me. You know why? People say, well, I wonder why all young people don't want to be a part of holiness anymore. They just all want to do this. They all want to do that. Nobody has any respect for the mystery. I'll tell you why. Because they have seen so many people crying wolf. Yes. That's right. Yeah. Okay. When the Holy Ghost spoke in that little lady's prayer meeting that day and told Shirley Hinkle that she was going to marry a man of Slavic descent. And Sister Shirley didn't even know what that meant. But when she married Brother Freddie, you know where Fred Lester's people came from? Czechoslovakia. She married a man of Slavic descent. Hey, and I'll tell you something tonight. We need to have the Holy Ghost real enough uh, that people are standing all of it. Uh, if they know those people have the goods, uh, if that woman lays her hands on you, uh, I'll tell you the Holy Ghost is going to do it. Uh, That the Spirit would move in. That's right. He'd speak. Come on, and it'd be that way. And 
It's got so now. Somebody gave out tongues and interpretation over an individual and said that God was going to raise them up and they're going to live and not die. And by that time, the next week, they're having their funeral before they had another church service. They had buried them. I'm telling you what, we've become a church of people that's quite lost. Awesome. And that's why the world's lost respect for the church. Yes. Help not so much the world's lost respect for the church because they're in love with the devil. It's because there's not much going on now. And they can't have confidence in it. What happened to that Holy Ghost power? And shouted Sister Winnie Tolliver back through those chairs and back to the back of that brush arbor and run that handkerchief down inside that gas light that John Romine was sitting in front of and didn't seem that handkerchief. What happened to that Holy Ghost power that Brother Roy Green told about that that woman went over and shouted around and around that cherry red stove, opened it up and pulled the fire out of heaven and put it back in and it never did burn in it all. Brother, I'm telling you, if we profess it, we better have the goods to back it up. We are the last day church. I wonder sometimes if we have done a great injustice has been done to the society of America. Because men like Tommy Tolliver are fading off the scene. And Wayne Dillard's gone. Sister Lee's White House is gone. And Sister Shirley's getting ready to be 75 years old. She can't travel and preach like she did. And I wonder if an injustice has been done. If I'm going to fly the flag, boys, I want to have the goods that go with it. Hey, man, I'm telling you, if I want to profess the Holy Ghost, I want to have that time that makes me shout. That time that sets me. That time that gets in my hands. That time that gets in my head. That time that gets in my head. such a mockery. And people say, well, nobody has any respect for the gifts of the Spirit anymore. They don't. I do. I still respect it. But there's been so much garbage put out in the name of Pentecost, in the name of wholeness. I'm not just bashing everybody tonight, but I'm telling you, Jesus told them in Matthew 17 that Daddy came to him. This is what's concerning me. I want you to get a hold of what I'm fixing to say. I want you to get a hold of this. There was a daddy that came to Jesus and he said if he fell down, he said, I want you to have mercy on my boy. He's vexed. He's vexed. Something's got hold on him. It cast him in the fire, he said. And he said, we brought him to your disciples. Yes. They could not cure him. Oh, you listen to me tonight. They could not cure him. When they asked Jesus how come we couldn't cure him, he says, because of unbelief. Man, you can draw upon me if you want to, but I'm going to stand flat for it and I will not apologize. I don't have to apologize for it. Jesus said, Unbelief stopped it. And I want you to hear this preacher tonight. Unbelief stopped it the end, and unbelief will stop it now. I'll tell you why a lot of people don't get healed. Why the demoniac can go to church and stay bound. Why the sinner comes and leaves the same. It's because of unbelief. There's people laying at our doorstep vexed. Yes. And we don't often have enough of the power of God to get them help. We're preaching healing. And I tell you, woo, we're preaching it. And I thank God we're seeing it right here. Amen. I thank God we're seeing it, Brother Brown. We've seen people get off these altars healed. We've seen yes. God heal cancer right here. We've seen God heal heart right here. We've seen God heal all kinds of things right here. Brother, I'll tell you why a lot of people don't believe in healing us. It's because we're preaching it to, and we ain't got anything to back it up with. Come on. We shout at a big shout. And we toot it on the trumpet. Yes. And when it come down to it. We ain't got what it takes oh, to back it up. Oh, God, help us, Jesus. Help us, Jesus. I'm worried tonight help us, Jesus. that there's some people that I know that are needing deliverance. Yeah. 
They need deliverance. And they can come to our meetings and our revivals and our camp meetings. And they can be just as bound as they came in. And boy, we're preaching it big. And we're better than these. 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 And they're leaving our churches just as dead as they left all Jesus, those you thought you were better than. God, help him, Lord. Help him, Jesus. Help him, God. Help him, I want you to know tonight healing of the body is real. Yes, yes. It's still God's will to heal people of diseases. Amen. Somebody said, well, it's appointed every man wants to die. I understand that. But I don't find anywhere in the Bible that the only way God can get me from here to heaven is to kill me with a disease first. I can just lay down and be gathered unto my father. I can just lay down somehow. He can just take my breath out of me. I don't have to die. Amen. With something or another. But I'm coming out leaving here. And it's turning. When somebody says it ain't real. And God ain't good anymore. I come to pay and I feel it's real. tell you the Holy Ghost still talks in tongues. <laughs> if you talked in tongues to get it, you'll have to talk in tongues to keep it. And if you didn't talk in tongues, you didn't get it. Amen. I'm not asking your opinion. I'm not asking anybody. I'm not taking a poll on social media. I'm telling you the word of the Lord told me that when the Holy Ghost sat down on them that they spake with other tongues. I still believe it's that way. I still believe there's hope, hope, hope for all nations. Yes. I'm going to this morning while Brother Anson put that slide show up here. And oh, I tell you, I'm going to tell this hope, 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 hope. Yes. Yes. Oh, Jesus. I mean, the reason some people that are bound don't go to church anymore is because they've been here too many times and couldn't get what they needed. There wasn't enough of the power of God to shake them loose the way it's half asleep. I know I'm preaching kind of stout. Bless I'm preaching God. what I felt God pouring in yes. my spirit. Yes. The church that cried off. Right. Hallelujah. I tell you, the Holy Ghost stopped me then. It's the Holy Ghost fell on my wife. I've been a camp meeting service with good microphones everywhere and cords and people and shouted her back and forth across there, spinning like a top with her head up and her eyes closed and shouted her backwards down a four or five steps of the pulpit, backwards and spinning and around the altar and back to the back. And Sister Debbie shouted her back to somebody and laid her hand on their head and God delivered them. That's the Holy Ghost I believe in. If it's a real Holy Ghost, you won't have to have a GPS to get there. I'm telling you, the Holy Ghost knows where it's at. Foxholes on the other side. They knew there was something behind that flag. Hey, Amen. That wasn't just a piece of cloth. That was marching with the might of America behind it. You know why you can drive a tank? Hey, Amen. Through those uh, those Middle Eastern countries with American flag on it, uh, and they fear that uh, because that holds seventy-five million people. Uh, hey, Amen. It holds the people behind it uh, that know how to use a weapon. Uh, hey, Amen. Brother, I'm telling you, if we're gonna fly the Christian flag, uh, I don't. children was little and said if you'll pray Jesus will heal me amen and we prayed and nothing much happened and they'd tell us sister Gail Benjamin a little bitty boy he said Pete in tongues daddy Pete in tongues daddy how come he said when mama Pete's in tongues 
Something happens, Daddy. And we've got very peaking tongue. When my dad was laying, hey man, they laid in a hospital bed. Me on one side, Brother Daryl Tolliver on the other. And it looked like my dad may die. And dad said, I want you guys to pray. And we prayed. And after a while, dad said, pray serious. And I tell you, me and Brother Daryl was praying serious. And he squeezed our hand and said, boy, and speak in tongues. I said, I can't just do that on demand. But he said, when that happens, this is going to back up on me. I tell you, not I got confidence in the power of the Holy Ghost. I don't want to just cry wolf. I want to have the guns. I want it to be. I want it to be that the Lord can trust us to carry the flag in this last hour. Somebody pulled into a hole in this church that we heard about. They sung the songs. They testified. They had a big service. That man and woman left. The pastor followed them out and sat down and they opened the sliding door and crawled up in the back of their minivan and said, could I help you with anything? And the sister Jean, they said, we came to your church looking for Jesus. We need Jesus. And they said, you hadn't said anything about him. I never heard the word about Jesus tonight. And he said, sure we have. And he went and tell them what they saw. What he said, I sit there until after a while I bowed my head between those captain chairs and I began to cry. And I said, if you'll come back in and give us another chance. I don't want it to be that somebody comes up to the Empire Free Holders Church and leaves here saying they didn't have anything to help me with. Oh, God, help us, Jesus. Oh, help us, Jesus. Help us, Jesus. Help us, Jesus. It's not just, I tell you what, I want you little children to listen. And you younger ones to listen to me. I don't preach mean to our young folks. I'm not blaming you for the shape our church is in. I've heard preachers get up and bash your young people and bash your young people. They don't have any respect for preachers. They don't have any respect for the house of God. It may be because they had never really seen anything to stand in awe about. You know why Joshua went up that mountain with Moses? You know why Joshua stood afar off but closer than everyone else? You know why? He'd seen the cloud come down. He felt that mountain when it shook. Hallelujah. Our young people had just lost all respect. I'll, I'll tell you this. The young people of America, school age on up to college age of America, a lot of our older people think that they're disrespectful. They don't have any respect, and sometimes it may be the case. But I wonder if a whole lot of it is that we've sent them so many mixed signals that they don't know what to trust anymore. I want you to know. Oh, oh. I don't have a pitchfork or an axe in my hand. I'm preaching with all the love I know how, but I'm telling you, I'm preaching. I'm not mad at you. I'm not mad at our church. I'm mad at the devil because he slipped in here and he stole some things from us that are precious. You know why? Some little children don't be still when the Holy Ghost talks. It's because they know what mom and dad is doing at home. And they don't have no confidence in that tongue that's jabbering. Help Come on here now. Help oh. Help Jesus. I know that's hard for to swallow. I know it's hard for us to admit some of those things. But there was a time that people came to church and if they were sinning, they got scared. Yes. I was just afraid that man of God would look down at them and say, yes. the Lord moved on me. Yes. Yes. There was an hour that some old sainted mother would get in the Holy Ghost and shout over to you and whisper in your ear. Mm -hmm. I've seen Sister Jennifer do it up and down this United States. I could not count the time, Sister Gail. Mm -hmm. I've seen my wife shout in the Holy Ghost across the building mm -hmm. to somebody and go to tell them something. Just not too long ago, I saw it happen. And the husband said, it sounded like your wife was in the car with us on the way to church. Said she was repeating the verbatim conversation that me and my wife had. I tell you what, if I want to fly the flag, yes. I want something behind it. Yes. Yes. I want the devil that seems like he's got such control over how to tell me. Yes. I tell you what. There was a time they didn't want no homeless preacher in jail. 
We got a record in here, about two of them they cast in there. And they had to call a repair guy. Because the earthquake tore the jail in pieces. Because they locked up the preacher. Well, we come a long way, haven't we? We've come a long way. Folks used to kind of skirt wide around the homeless folks because they're afraid of Holy Ghost I want to get on one of them. Oh, help me, Lord. I don't want to lose that. I tell you, I want to get a hold of me. I get to worry. I pray the other day, Lord, has it been too long since them little girls in church have seen me get in the Holy Ghost and shake and shout. I don't want to get too dignified. I don't want to become a club. I don't want to get an uncertain sound. I want you to know sin still takes people to hell. Sin will still take my loved ones to hell. Sin will still take your loved ones to hell. I still want my little girls to know that if the prophecy goes out and it's really from God, it's going to happen just like the Holy Ghost said it would. That Holy Ghost come in here the other night on us and let us know to let a date be few and another take us all us. And before the week was up, is that right? That's on Sunday night. Sister Debbie texts me on Wednesday. And the Lord had turned something around. Are y'all hearing me tonight? I'm telling you, I want to have the real goods. I want that power of God. I want somebody to you know. I tell you, it makes me feel so good. And I don't even proud. But when somebody calls and says, can we come up to your church a certain night? Well, sure you can. What's wrong? I got bad news at the doctor. And I want to come let your folks pray over me. Yeah. It makes me feel good. We work to the in the morning. Some preacher oh. that made 100 miles from here sends me a message in the night and said, would you please get up in the morning and ask them folks down there at Empire to pray over that woman in my church. I tell you, Brother Junior, I want folks to know this ain't just a little dead down here. Yeah. This is a real I want the trouble to give up certain saints. I need to quit. I don't even know how long I preach, but I preach longer than I usually do, and I'm sorry. But I don't plan on going to bed with this. You know. I come on business tonight. And Jennifer told us, she said, you're going to be mean to us. I said, no. But I said, I'm there to deliver something God made on my heart. And I can't take it home with me. We were sitting in a pastor's home. We didn't even have children yet. I remember right. If we did, it was Benjamin. He was just a little baby. Sitting in the pastor's home, in a homeless church, in a revival, many, 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 many miles from many states from right here. Those young daughters of his asked Sister Jennifer and I that night after we'd stayed up and ate with them and played games and sat around. Back then you stayed with a preacher, you know. Didn't have evangelist quarters then. That church didn't. A lot of churches didn't. But in the night, that night, they said, What's it like? I said, have you ever been in church when the Holy Ghost, you know, spoke in tongues and then somebody interpreted that? I said, oh yeah, sure. We never have. What's that like? What is that? What is that? A some folks will think it's necessary, but if God thought it enough, and when he said, I gave these gifts to the church, I divided them out and I gave them to the church. We need it. Yes, if months roll by and the Holy Ghost goes speaking up our Holy Church, your preacher's on his face somewhere before God saying, how come you don't love us and not talk to us anymore? I'm glad that our little girls sit here. They know what it sounds like to hear the Holy Ghost speak out and hear somebody say, thus saith the Lord. The church that cried wolf. If all we've ever become, listen close to me. I have toiled in this fellowship hall just like you have, fixing meals for outreach. I wish we did it every month. I wish we did it every Saturday. It is my heart. We just don't have the manpower to pull it off all the time. It's hard work. One of the last ones we had. I cooked seven or eight gallons of green beans that morning. Jennifer cooked for 19 and a half hours straight. 
sick as a dog. I drove her from house to house. She and I handed out meals and tracks. We'd get back in the car for the grand and drive out the people's driveway and Jennifer would stop and throw up beside the road for she was so exhausted. I said, you want to go home? No. Let's go to the next house and throw up again. She didn't have a virus. We wouldn't spread the virus around the community. She just wore out. It's hard work. I believe in it. But if all we have become is a people that gives out t-shirts and hot dogs, we're no better than the Catholics. Do you hear me? God did not call us to just clothe and feed. They that turned the world upside down. I'm not just taking those meals because I think everybody around here is hungry. I'm taking that because I want them to know there's a church that loves you. I want them to know if you need prayer, you can call us up and we'll go to pray. Yes. Say, Brother Justin, you up there preaching that everybody you ever pray for gets healed? No. No, they don't. Sometimes I preach their funerals. Sometimes I have to go to the doctor. I'm not preaching to you that I've got it all. But I'm telling you, if I'm going to preach divine healing, I want to see some healings. Yes. Yes. If I'm going to profess the Holy Ghost, I want you to hear me talk in tongues. Yes. And I don't just mean so you can hear me. I want you to know he's in there. Yes. If I'm going to preach that I'm an old-time, holiness Pentecostal man, I better shake and shout. That's right. Oh, yeah. I'm listening for him. Just give me a minute. I don't leave anything out. I don't want anything to this. I'm just trying to preach through here. I want to make sure I'm through before I call you in to pray. I believe you'll agree with me tonight that we're on the verge of having a church world around us that's just cried wolf. But you hear me tonight, young and old. I'm not crying wolf. Jesus is coming. He may not come in my lifetime. He's coming. He's coming. He's coming. And he's going to divide the sheep from the goats. He's coming. There's going to be a trumpet one day. I'm not crying wolf. It's going to happen. It's really going to happen. Your Amy shared with Brianna about how God healed her. Was it your back, sister? When the Lord healed her back? I don't want to ever come to a place that our grandchildren and children and our little ones in church have to say, what's it like when somebody gets healed? I want to know. God heals cancer. Caroline, I want you to know, sissy, that we prayed for people that had cancer and it fell off in Brother Justin's hand. It happened. Did it do it? I've seen them shrivel up and fall off. Man. I want you to know, Caroline, and Addison and Linda, that your Sunday school teacher had a big lump come up in her throat for months that grew there. And the Holy Ghost said one night, swallow it. And Sister Brianna swallowed it. And that went away. And they never asked about that. I want you to know that. I want you to know. I want you to know. Sister Jean's eyes used to be crossed in and God healed them, made them straight. I want you to know that. I want you to know that we prayed for Brother Junior one night in a big old spot right here on his head. Yes. He had dozens of them burned off, but he didn't ask us to pray for them. Yes. And so that you put oil on this one and pray that it dries up. Yes. And it dried up. And the doctor said you should have had him put oil on all the rest of them too. <laughs> I want you to know that. I want you to know there's a real. There's something real in here. I want you to know it really real. I want you to know that I'm so drunkards come to the altar drunk and get up sober and full of the Holy Ghost. I want you to know I've seen people come to church full of devils that they foamed and they watered and they vomited. And when they left, their life was clean from that. They had the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I want you to know that one year ago, last month, I shattered that hand and the bone come right up, stuck out. I want you to know that. I want you to know that, Brother Chuck, Brother Brad. 
But you all know what happened. Didn't it happen? Broke it. Yes. Yep, we go. 21 minutes later, Jennifer and Brianna and Addison anointed. Brother Jeff Owens on the phone got that bone back in place. 21 minutes. There was no bruise. There was no soreness. There was no mark. God healed it. Don't you know that? I ain't just flying a flag around here. Don't have anything to hide it. I'm telling you, there's a God that's real. I need to quit. I, I, I tell you, I'm feeling through here. I know I'm preaching a while. Brianna come in one day and sat down. I got in from working. She come in, sat down, and I was getting ready to get a shower and get cleaned up. She come in the bedroom. Daddy, can I talk to you? I said, yes. She come in there and stood and stuttered and stuttered and stammered and stammered. Couldn't ever get anything said. In a little bit, I told her, I said, Brianna, are you just going to tell me? What, Daddy? I said, just tell me you cut your hair and you lied about it because the Holy Ghost done told me. I knew when you did it, sissy. And she just... Uh, she said, you did. I said, yeah, he told me, baby. She said, are you going to kill me? I said, no. Have you prayed about it? She said, I told Jesus I was sorry. Right away. I want you to know the Holy Ghost knows what you did. Yes, you hear me? Yes. Benjamin didn't have a school, couldn't find school papers. Weeks went by, couldn't find them. I said, we look, we look, we look, we called places we preached. Sister Debbie said, I must have left him somewhere. He just out playing and having a big time. No school. We're trying to get some more places. I was praying one day and the Holy Ghost showed me a vision of a trash barrel. I saw those paces go in it. And I saw a match go in it. And I saw a sack of trash go on top of it. And the vision lifted. I called him in there. Pretty good sized fellow then. Pretty good sized boy. Hey, where's your, where's your school papers? I don't know, he said like that. I don't know. I must have left them somewhere. I said, son, the Holy Ghost showed me. And I watched all those paces go in the barrel. And a match. And then a bag of trash. And he said, Daddy, you know I need to pray. <laughs> I want you to know the Holy Ghost knows what you're doing. I don't want you to get comfortable sitting feel like, yes, I made it in service Brother Justin, never smell this and that. I want you to know the Holy Ghost, God will tell on you. Live right. Because the Holy Ghost knows what we're doing. I don't want us to lose our respect for the Word of God. I don't want us to lose our respect for the man of God. I don't want us to lose our respect for the house of God. And I don't want us to lose our respect for the Spirit of God. Because the preacher cried wolf. I want you to know you can trust him. It's real. Yes. Let's stand tonight. I want to give a certain sound. I want you to know that it's a certain sound. Yes. It bothers me when I hear people say, this is going to be, and this is going to be, and then it don't ever happen. It bothers me. It bothers me when I hear preachers have to go back and amend things that they claim God told them. Don't cry wolf. Don't cry wolf. Say it right. Live it right. Let's, let's end the broadcast. I want to tell you something.